She is Gina Reinhardt, the richest person in Australia and the executive chairman of Hancock Prospecting, a privately owned mineral exploration and extraction company. Gina has awarded her 10 staff members a $10,000 bonus each as the company generated a profit of $3.3 billion in the past 12 months. But wait, numbers can be deceptive, and this figure is a 28% drop compared to last year. And as we set foot into another year, this figure would see a much greater decline in 2023. Australia is plunging into an unprecedented crisis, leaving the economy in doldrums. But the origins of this inevitable crisis lie 7,500 kilometers to the north. Going into 2023, Beijing is about to lay the seeds of Australia's economic destruction. China is finally putting an end to the disastrous zero COVID policy, but the resumption of economic activity will also bring about a restructuring of the economy. After suffering at the hands of the downtrodden property sector, China wants to move towards an economic model dependent on consumer consumption. And this is what can spell disaster across the ocean in Australia. But to understand why Australia's economic fortunes are entangled with China and what's the link between mining mogul Gina Reinhardt and China, we have to go back a few years to a small market in Wuhan. This bat in China might possibly be the main culprit for COVID-19. A study conducted by the World Health Organization revealed that the virus jumped from this bat into humans. But the study could not identify the exact epicenter of the virus on account of missing data. But whether or not the bats actually caused it, this issue of the origins of the virus proved to be the cause of a deadlock between China and Australia. In 2020, Australia demanded an inquiry into the origins of the pandemic. And well, someone sitting in Beijing did not like it. President Xi responded with trade restrictions and a ban on some of Australia's exports, including raw materials from Gina Reinhardt. And it started the Cold War, putting risk to a $14 billion annual industry. More on Gina Reinhardt later. But the Cold War was so intense that the Australian ship Topaz was forced to wait 269 days at the port of Xingtang. More than 90,000 tons of coal were not allowed to enter by the Chinese authorities. And the situation did not end there. Almost 70 vessels with Australian coal were stranded off China for about a year. Beijing even threatened Australia to look for new buyers. But in May 2022, when Australia saw a new prime minister at the helm of affairs, Beijing smartly cleared its backlog of stranded Australian coal. Over 8 million tons of coking coal was cleared with 6 million tons of thermal coal. Australia got its stranded ships moving, but coal isn't the only driver of trade relations between China and Australia. Trade linkages between Australia and China. For the past decade, China has been growing rapidly. Rapid urbanization and industrialization mean that China is in need of minerals and raw materials. And China's development thirst has been fulfilled by Australia. Beijing is Australia's largest trading partner, accounting for nearly one-third of Australia's exports and one-fifth of Australia's imports. In 2019, China accounted for 82% of Australia's iron ore exports, and guess what? Australian coal is home to China's thermal power stations. But this economic bond is more complex than you think. Australia is also a leading supplier of liquefied natural gas to China. This year, the LNG exports are somewhere between 
18 to 19 billion Australian dollars. And if you think this is just it, you are mistaken. China has also become the engine of Australia's services sector. Universities in Canberra, Melbourne and Sydney are home to significant enrollments from Chinese students. As of June 2019, there were around 164,317 Chinese students completing their education on Aussie turf. Tourism is another sector that fuels the Australian economy. Before the pandemic in 2019, around 150,000 Chinese came to Australia on tourist visas. See the amount of economic interdependence between the two countries is huge. Well, the list is endless, and it appears that the Chinese have strengthened their footprints on other commodities as well, and this includes alcoholic beverages, milk products, beef, and barley. Remember Gina Reinhardt we discussed at the beginning? Her company is also into joint ventures with the Chinese. In 2016, she agreed on a deal with the Chinese company Shanghai Cred to jointly purchase S. Kidman & Co., the country's largest private land holding, to export beef to China. But even now, her words suggest that alarm bells are about to be rung. And what is coming next is no joke. Australia might be on its knees, and if the Chinese economy doesn't stabilize in the next few months, we are afraid it would be an economic winter in Melbourne, Canberra, and the entirety of Australia. And here's why. In December, the Chinese government announced the end of a stringent zero-COVID policy. The policy of find, test, trace, isolate, and support is gone but its repercussions remain to haunt the Chinese citizens. Prolonged lockdowns have stagnated economic growth and reduced the demand for essential items, including Australian exports. Inflation is galloping and the unemployment rate is rising in China. While many thought that ending the zero COVID policy will increase the demand for Australian products and bring back China on track, this has not been the case. Bloomberg recently reported that Beijing would postpone its Central Economic Work Conference because COVID cases are once again rising. On top of that, countries have imposed strict COVID rules on China arrivals, meaning that mobility from and to China would be limited in coming months. Warning signs for Australia's tourism sector. Reuters and The Economist have also reported that many in Beijing are afraid and they do not want to come out of their homes. COVID is far from over in China. Beijing's biggest nemesis is hovering over its heads. The new variant is spreading with no end in sight. Economic activity is stagnated and uncertainty is looming large. What could this mean for Australia? At first glance, you might argue that once things get right, Australia would be back to business. Some could also argue that this is short term. And once Omicron is controlled, Chinese students and tourists would resume for their pre-COVID spending habits. But things might never go back to the pre-pandemic normal, especially when it comes to trade between China and Australia. The reason lies in China's property market crash. For the last three decades, the property sector has been the main fuel for the Chinese economy. But most of the money that comes into the sector is from pre-sold homes. What this means is that the buyer pays the mortgage on a project that is not completed. The existing projects are completed on borrowed money, but consumers keep paying more money on assets that don't exist. You'd say that's a Ponzi scheme, and you may be right. But this year, most of China's housing companies, including Evergrande, became bankrupt as the supply of money stagnated. This housing crisis erupted because most of China's economy is construction-driven. Around 26% of all GDP in China is centered on the construction sector. But the policymakers are now focusing on a shift 
to more sustainable options. This is a top Chinese agenda for 2023. The more China faces the troubles of the property sector, the more it will increase the urgency to reform. This eventually means if China's construction sector does not play an influential role in the coming year, the demand for Australia's iron and coal will dwindle further. Regardless of the end of the zero COVID policy, Australia will face an inevitable crisis. At the end of 2022, the unemployment rate in Australia remained at 3.5%, and economists predict that this will get worse. Let's assume that economic activity in China is limited for the next six months. What will happen? Demand would go down, and the price of Australian commodities would decrease. The coal industry of around $14 billion will be devastated, and Australia will incur the loss. This would eventually have a spillover effect on Australia's revenue and its future investment plans. And maybe the services sector, including tourism and education, will suffer. Well, we need to admit that Australia's fortunes ride on the back of a bulk carrier. And the latest developments indicate that the country's economy is trapped. What are the options for Australia? Despite the current geopolitical environment, a sudden decoupling from China would be a big mistake since it accounts for almost 40% of Australia's exports. However, it would be wise for Australia to pursue a policy of trade diversion and look for alternative buyers. For example, when China refused to buy Australian coal in 2020, it went to the Russian and Indonesian markets. This created demand gaps in India, Japan, and South Korea, which was fulfilled by Australian coal. See, Australia needs to be smart. The same tactic can be applied to barley and beef products. But finding these alternative markets would take time. Australia needs solutions and needs them quickly. For now, 2023 looks bleak, and Australia will look towards China to see what the future holds. China's plans to get rid of the strict zero-COVID policy have been welcomed across the world, as many see China as the savior for a world plunging into economic peril. However, this does not guarantee positive rewards for Australia, as China also wants to move towards a consumer consumption-driven economy. The battering of the property market is forcing China to consider alternatives and for Australia, this means the end to billions of dollars of construction exports. China took a long time to emerge from the COVID bubble, and as it pushes to finally step out, there's a property bubble set to explode. The government is also busy with crackdowns and people's confidence is shattered. A stop-start reopening means that the future is murky, but what happens in China does not stay in China. Its spillover effect will engulf Australia, which is China's largest trading partner. A decline in Australian coal and iron is guaranteed to cause unemployment in Canberra, Melbourne, and all over the land down under. Gina Reinhardt might be distributing rewards and bonuses for profits, but this could be short-lived as the challenging 2023 awaits. It all depends on the pandemic in China, Australian policies, and how quickly China shifts to self-sufficiency. Dark times await. The clouds of harsh economic winters will remain for a while. <laughs>